الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كلام المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما أموالكم وأولادكم فتنة والله عنده أجر عظيم أمنت بالله صدق الله مولانا عظيم قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم وخالق الناس بخلق حسن أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته May the peace and blessing of Allah Almighty be upon each and every single one of you, your families and our communities as a whole and I welcome you to today's Jumu'ah May Allah Almighty accept all of our efforts Often when we plan and when we think about what we talk about on a Friday, we take various things into consideration. And one of those things is, or one of those things are, the current time as to where we are in the calendar year, what's happening in our community, and then off the back of that, what lessons can we take from the model of Islam set by Allah Almighty, and understood through the example of the Prophet ﷺ and then how do we apply this into everyday modern 2021 life and one of the things that we know is here or is coming is the festive period of Christmas whereby we have roughly two weeks where our children are off school and it's one of the few times throughout the year where we as parents have a larger window in terms of the time that we have with our children. And in today's speech or lessons, I'd like to take the opportunity to focus on what does Islam say in terms of how we should be with our children and for those who are children, what does Islam say in terms of how are we expected to be with our parents? If we look at modern day sciences, and if you look at the historians who have studied the issue and who have wrote books upon books upon books, we always see that these lessons and the theme of what they are trying to tell us are inspired from the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, who had already taught us these lessons more than 1400 years ago. And this Sunnah is also emulated in the Prophets before him, in the wise men before him, all the way back to Adam Wasallam. And also this is emulated as a Sunnah we find from the people after the Prophet وسلم, from his Ashab to the great companions and also the great people of today's society and the great people of our past. And the essence of the lesson when we look at it, and if I was to take one core cool line from this lesson that Islam shows us, is the essence, the importance of quality time. Islam sets a model to guide us in our life. And when we see the model that's explored when it comes to children from parents and parents from children, the theme, the lesson is spend good quality time. 
And if we look at today's society and we look at the issues that we have, whether it's a lack of education, a lack of role model, or the issues of violence and the complexities that we have in our community, we find one thing that studies show that the lack of role model theory, one of the biggest influences, fact, influencing factors towards this, is that we don't show or feel love to one another. So in the following two weeks, what are the pointers that we can take home and what can we implement in our daily lifestyle at home when we have, for example, the day of the 25th of December, Christmas off, New Year's Day off, the 27th and the 28th of December, both bank holidays off. What can we do to improve that relationship, that quality time, that structure at home in the light of Islam, the Quran, the Sunnah, and the example of the Prophet So if we look at the modern day example given, number of websites, I always advise people that when we quote references and websites and sources where we get information from, write it down in your phone. Go home and explore what's talked about. We look at websites like verywell.com, which talks about how to be well in every aspect of life. And it breaks down three points on parenting and understanding children. You know, often we find that these holidays, we focus so much on doing things for school going back. But we forget the element of giving children time to relax. Giving children a break from this overload of information, whether it's in school, whether it's watching the TV, whether it's listening to the news or the radio, or whether it's interaction with people. The first thing it says, guide and support, but do not push or demand. This is a break. Use the time of a break to allow children to recharge their batteries and take a moment to relax so that they can absorb the benefits of life. And the second thing, and this is where the Sunnah and the Islam, the connection between the two starts to come in, that remember your children are always watching you. And this we find in the model of Islam where Allah Almighty tells us that remember I have left you two angels that always watch you and I always know, I watch, I am aware of everything that you do. So the same way we are as people, our children watch us. And when they watch us, the first thing that they do is they learn from us. So if there's any bad habits that you have, then you need to reflect and think, my children are at home more these two weeks, they are going to see me. They are going to work out what it is that I do good and what it is that I do bad. Maybe I need to change something. And finally, it talks about show them how to love you. You know, one of the biggest dreams that we have as parents, that we want our children to listen to us. We want them to love us. We want them to be like us. For your child to be like you, you need to be a certain way. For your child to love you, you need to give him or her the understanding of what love actually is. And that is by being merciful and loving towards them. And how do we increase mercy and love towards our children? We spend time with them. You know, we have two weeks off and we have bank holidays off. Often we find that we engage ourselves in so many programs with work colleagues, with friends, with members of our community. But when do we engage and we take a portion of time to simply sit at home? Simply just to relax with our children. So take some time out from your busy schedule and the calendar of the next two weeks when your children are at home, just to stay at home. Just to use some time so you can look at your child and you can love them and you can eat with them and you can spend the quality time of the whole day with them. And then you can show them how they should love you by showing them how you love them. And if you look at the Quran and the model that Islam talks about and the model that Islam sets, You'll see, we find examples throughout the Qur'an, from the beginning to the end. But some key examples are found in the story of the following four people. Luqman alayhi salam. Allah Almighty reminds us in Surah Luqman. 
Allah also shows us, reminds us how her parents should be with children in the story of Yaqub with his interruptions around his son Yusuf and the brothers. And also Allah Almighty shows us examples of the, in the Quran about Prophet Ibrahim who was asked to sacrifice his child in the name of Allah. But that child, Ismail, if we look at that story, we hear this at the time of Eid, around the Qurbani story. One of the biggest lessons that I will touch upon is the fact that Ibrahim والسلام, had such a relationship with his child that he could expect and ask him that, oh my son, I have been ordered by Allah Almighty to sacrifice you in his way. And his son did not decline his father. Imagine what that friendship must have been like. The fact that the father could ask his son so openly for such a big thing. And finally we find the greatest story in none other than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa If I was to take the story of these four examples that Allah Almighty sets, and if we were to break it down into the three points that I've mentioned in terms of what modern day science and modern day society says, then we will be able to draw a link. And the Quran and Islam set some prerequisites, some conditions, some requisites of what you should expect from yourself before expecting something from your child. And if we look at the theory that we use, the model that we use, we often ask for things, we often start to implement things, we often make dua for things once our children are here. But the Quran, Islam, Allah Almighty, through the Prophet وسلم, teaches us something a little bit different. The first condition, the first piece of advice, and this message goes to my brothers and the sisters who are looking to have children, that you make dua before parenthood. You make dua when, not when the child is here, or when the missus is pregnant, or when we're thinking about children, and fatherhood, and motherhood. We make dua before we even intend to have children. So before the coming of the child, we make dua for him or her. And the first thing or things that we ask for is, Ya Allah, make them, him or her, a means of good in this society. And side by side with this dua, Islam teaches us to ask for ourselves. The, ya Allah, give me the ability to be a good father. Ya Allah, give me the ability to be a good mother to the child that I am looking to bear and bring into this world. Ask Allah, Ya Allah, when you give me a child, make them amongst the people who stand for social justice, people who stand for haq. And if you're asking this from Allah, then you need to look at yourself and ask, am I somebody who stands for justice? Am I someone who's good? And then we find even in the Prophet وسلم, with his grandchildren, Imam Hassan and Hussein, he asked and he sought refuge for them that Allah Almighty protect, protect them. So when your children are young, the first thing that you should do is not focus on them. The second condition is a role model theory. Where Islam explores the principles of being a role model for a child. It does not put focus on the child. So before the child comes, we focus on ourselves by asking Allah to put us in line. To get us into gear, so that we can prepare for the coming of this child. When the child is here and young, we talk about the role model. Who is the role model? You. We, you, me, I, we are the role model, not the child. So the focus is still not on the child. The focus is on you and I, my brothers and sisters. That what? Whatever you want your child to be, you need to ask yourself, are those qualities in you? Whatever it is that you want your child to contribute to this world, are those qualities present in yourself? It's a yes and a no question. And if they're not, then you need to start focusing on instilling those qualities in yourself before you want this child to grow up. You need to focus on instilling these qualities in yourself before the child comes in. And then, if we look at the Prophet wasallam example, that when the child is here, and this is something that you and I can do in the coming weeks, that build two things with your children. Firstly, build sabr, patience with them. 
And once you build the characteristics of patience, then you will then move on to perseverance. Achievements, moving forward, consistency. And how is that achieved? By showing them what you want them to be. The Prophet of Allah Almighty Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when his daughter, Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, would walk into the room, what did he used to do? He used to get up off his seat, walk to the door, and welcome her into the home. You know how we have this red carpet theory? When you have a big celebrity, you roll the red carpet out, give them respect. Honestly, the Prophet ﷺ gave more respect to his daughters just when they entered, or just when she entered his household, than we give today on the red carpet theory. This is just for entering the home. So imagine what the expectation of you and I, you and I is when we enter the home and we see our children awake and ready in the morning because they have no school. What should that smile look like? When you've had a stressful day at work, what should your face, what should your demeanor, and who should you bring to the table when you come home? And then, we are taught patience. In one of the biggest lessons of the story of Yusuf salam, and we're all aware around his brothers, and the, the plot and the plan that they had, when his brothers went to their father, Yaqub salam, and they told him about this wild story that they made up about his shirt, and the fact that he's missing and they've done absolutely nothing wrong, what did Yaqub do? He listened. Even though he knew, he knew for a fact that what these, what these guys are telling me is completely untrue. And they've made attempts to get rid of my child. But what did he do? He showed them patience. He listened to them. And later, he addressed the situation. Even the story of Ismail with his father, they had such a good relationship that his father could ask him to, and be in a position to tell him, Oh my son, Allah Almighty has commanded me to sacrifice you in the name of his being. And what did Ismail say? I am ready. You know, we focus on the sacrifice, but how often do we focus on that question that what must that relationship have been like between father and son? That father could ask something so huge, the magnificence of what's being asked is beyond comprehension. You know, when we ask our children to do something, they get upset, or when our children ask something from us, we get upset. Compare this to the level of the ask of the Prophet Ibrahim and then focus on how later in his life did Allah Almighty bless him with the child. And what must that conversation have looked like and what must that relationship have looked like from childhood, before childhood. You know the prerequisites that we talked about, that before the child comes make dua, prepare yourself. When the child is young, make dua, prepare yourself. And when the child is old, to an age of understanding, make time for them. Smile at them, invest in them, and show them what, not how to be or what you want them to be, show them how to be by showing them how to follow you. Whatever you want in them, they should learn from you. You are the biggest role model for your child. You know, they say, the father is the first king a child sees. The father is the first hero a child sees. And the mother is the first queen that the child sees. Whatever you tell your child, whatever you tell your child, he will think that's right, she will think that's right. You know, one of my friends, he used to hold his child in his hand and he told me this story and I still remember this and I'll finish with this. That how much do your children follow you and how much should you set yourself up in a way where what you are should be what you want your children to be. You know when we open the door with the keys? So this child used to take the, the, the key and his father asked him one day, can you open the door? So he gets the key, gets the one key that opens the house door, puts it in his mouth, takes it out, puts it in the door and opens it. So the father asks, why did you put the key in your mouth? And he remembered that when he used to hold him as a child, and he used to have a bunch of keys, he used to put his house key in the mouth, take it out, separate it, and open the door. 
because the child used to be in his hand and both of his hands were free. This child opens, one of the first times he opens the door, the door to his own hand, he puts it in his mouth. This is the level of interaction that these children have. So my brothers and my sisters and the people listening at home, use the next two weeks wisely. You know, time, the commodity, the value of time can never be measured. And time is only reflected upon when time is gone. You know, often we always look back and say, oh, if only I did this, or oh, if only I did that. I promise you, you know, on the day of judgment, we will be the same. We will look back and think, had only I did this at this time, had only I did that at that time. And you and your children, they will grow fast. Today they're six, tomorrow they'll be 12. The day after you feel like they're ready to get married, and you look back and think, where did all this time go? So while the time is here, you've got two weeks ahead of you, use your time wisely, give them a break, do not overload them with information, and make excuse, make reasons for quality family time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase the barakah and the conditions of every single household in our communities, and may give you and I the ability to act and listen to what was said today. Jazakumullah khairan wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.